If I had to give one piece of advice for anyone who was thinking about starting their own business, no matter what industry it is, it's just to go out there and do it. Actions speak louder than words and this stuff just isn't going to happen by itself. You need to make it happen. And despite everything that's happening, now is honestly one of the best times to start a business. There are so many opportunities. So yeah, I think ultimately you just got to go and do it. Otherwise your dream just won't come true if you just sit there and think about it. Hey guys, so today I wanted to do something a little bit different. We're actually in my home at the moment and I just thought it would be a really good opportunity to talk you through how I started up uh, Perspective Studios, which is uh, my video production company, and what that kind of looked like, how that felt, the, the barriers that I came up against, and the things that seemed to work well, and inevitably what made me grow into a full-size production company where we employ a team of people, uh, we regularly turn over six figures, we have a studio, we get to travel the world working on major projects for these amazing brands and um, yeah and kind of how how can you get there and I think the advice that I like to give particularly on this channel is all very business related so it doesn't actually matter whether or not you're a filmer or a photographer or you've got a candle making business. I think what I've learned over time in having multiple mentors and going to seminars and things like that is that solid business advice is the same no matter what industry you're in. And that's what makes business such a strong and important point of any business. Because I know certainly a lot of creatives will be watching this and in the creative world, you know, it's actually less focused on business and more what can you create, or at least that's what we think it is. But business is intertwined in, in the back of that and it really creates the stable foundation for you to grow and excel because if you're the most creative person but you haven't got the first clue about how businesses operate and run and how to get return on investments and how to find markets, etc., and sales and all of those things, then your business is just not gonna work. So I think people who have made it successful and they think it's solely due to their creativity and what that they can they can produce are seriously underestimating their ability in business and perhaps need to understand that better and if they can build more onto the back end of that and understand business even more it will make their business i know i'm saying business a lot of times but it, it will make their uh, company grow to beyond what they thought was impo possible beforehand. Whereas some people who, again, only understand the business side can make a lot of money, but it needs to be then backed up. And that's where, for a creative side of things, it will be uh, your creative aspect that will keep people coming back to you because obviously you need to be able to deliver on what you're saying you're gonna. So anyway, that's why I talk about business so much and, and I particularly wanna talk about my journey. I'm gonna kinda condense this down and I wanna know if you guys like this content, then please do like it, subscribe, leave a comment because that's what tells me that, hey, you guys like this, maybe I should do more things like these videos. And I'm really appreciating the people who uh, reach out and, and subscribe to this community as well. Um, it's certainly something I wanna have an impact on people's lives and their businesses as well. And I really want people to take some value away from this and find it inspirational or, or find it useful and take little things, little nuggets that they can implement into their own business and, and make a change. So yes, uh, I wanted to do this, uh, make it a little bit more personal. Like I said, I'm at home at the moment recording this. I just thought it'd be a really nice thing to do. So my journey, there was never really an on off switch on like, this is the second I've got a company and this was when I used to be a professional skier. If you don't know about my background, there's lots of things, I've done lots of podcasts about it, but I used to travel the world competing as a professional freestyle skier. And then really through injury, I was like, what next? You know, I'm thir 13 times I spent in hospital. And on that 13th time, probably about the 10th time, it was like, what, what else is there? What should I do? What do I enjoy doing? And that's where I kind of fell into filmmaking. And I juggled the two for a couple of years, um, you know, still being a competitive skier and just figuring out what I wanted to do. And in that meantime, I created uh, a lot of ski films where we got sponsorship for. And I think everything that I teach really has 
a unique athlete's mindset because we can all agree that athletes are wired in a very different way and actually it wasn't until later on in life, later on in business that I really understood how much I knew as an athlete that other people weren't implementing in terms of a business sense and they're the things that I kind of try and share with people as well. Um, just looking at things slightly differently, how everything's negotiable, how you can always do swap strategies and free of charge strategies, things like that to help build a business and, and these are things that I will also go into more detail in down the line but uh, I've also covered as well in some depth in some of my Q&As and bits and pieces like that. So. For me, I think some like key points when I started was, it was never like, oh, I've got a business. Like, this is a business. It was like, I wanna go and film. And I knew some people who were filmers and then they brought me onto some shoots. And I was actually out in New Zealand. Uh, this is something that, that sticks out to me, at least the most, is I was in New Zealand, because that's where the ski competition season would start. So I was out there um, with my now wife, um, for like six months or so and a friend of mine was a filmmaker and she brought me along to some shoots and I was like shit people like actually get paid for this like that's really cool don't forget I've never had any film qualifications really many qualifications whatsoever leaving school and it was just filming was something I just fell into I just kind of I, I always enjoyed making ski edits showing off new tricks things like that and seeing other people and seeing that they get to travel the world doing this it was kind of like wow that kind of seems cool like I want a piece of that like and they get paid for it like even cooler I'm already getting paid for doing something I love so I definitely want the next job I have to be something that I love as well so for me it was kind of like right okay well I started to get some paid jobs and I started to have something that looked a little bit more like a business. I registered my company. Um, and I, number one, number one piece of advice I always say to anyone is get an accountant, even get it early on, because they are worth their weight in gold and they are people who um, really will just save you so much time. Like, yes, it is an expense initially. Yes, it is an outlay, but it just saves you so much time. And, and they can set up your business for you in a matter of seconds and then there you go, you're away and you have some kind of business. But like I said, it was never like an on off switch. It was never something that was like, okay, I've got a business, I'm a business owner now. It was just having fun and just doing what I thought was right and creating content. And, and the same way as I had done with sponsorship is outreach into brands. And that's where like, again, no matter what industry you're in, it, you need to be proactive. If you sit there waiting for the phone to ring, people aren't gonna know that I'm filming now and, and want me to produce their stuff. You have to go out there and get it. You have to approach businesses. You have to tell them, hey, I make this really cool content. You know, do you agree? Is it something that you wanna you know, work together on? Or have you got any projects and things like that? And they're things that I really try and, um, say about being proactive and taking that right mindset and you have to put yourself out there and, and we did a poll recently in my free uh, Facebook group which is aspiring filmmakers and videographers and it said you know what's one of the things that's holding you back or what's your biggest barrier at the moment a lot of people said having the confidence to go out there and get sales now I've developed confidence over a period of time um, confidence to sit in front of the camera speak to you guys confidence to put myself out there and say hey this is who I am I now want to help other people and ultimately that comes with some people who just don't like me and you have to kind of accept those things as well as there's been a lot of support as well and I think confidence is something that can be built it, if you're not a confident person initially it it's something that can grow and you can work on and you can work on those things so don't just accept that that's a limiting belief right you limit your own belief of what's possible by thinking I, I'm not a confident person so I could never go out and just email companies. Anyone can email companies. I mean, that's the most faceless thing you can do. I admit that picking up the phone and calling people is harder. That's something, again, you can train yourself into through techniques and stuff like that. But being proactive was, was that thing that I definitely took forward from skiing. And as a startup company is a thing that you need to go out there. People won't just find your product. I would almost advise against putting loads of money into advertising initially as well, because you need to learn these, this like basic structures of business and how businesses operate and kind of in some ways learn the hard way but learn from experience before you then just go and sink a load of money into Facebook advertising because you haven't really understood your audience you haven't you haven't got enough people to know the kind of things they like the kind of personalities they are different sales types and techniques and things like that so I think just sometimes experience but 
knowing that you can build confidence and not having a limiting belief structure, that's going to kind of put a negative spin on that. So for me, I spent that first period of time like thinking, well, okay, let's, let's outreach to people. Let's start to get some projects in. And I was still very much skiing over the winter. And then in the summer, I would do a few, uh, a few jobs. And then those jobs then moved into the winter. Sponsors turned to clients and things like that as well. And I think it worked so well because I was quite simply just having fun with it. I was just doing what I enjoyed. I was just not worried about the money. I wasn't chasing the money. I was just chasing what I was passionate about and what I wanted to have at the end of it. And then my vision grew quite quickly. And this is why, like, if anyone does a mentoring session with me, number one, the first thing we do on session one is get your vision as set as you possibly can. It might change and that's fine, but you need to have some idea with where you're aiming because then you know if your business is going in the right direction. So to any startup company, I would definitely say, what do you want? Align your personal goals with your business goals and then create a business that you want because they're the things that are gonna make you wanna get out of bed on a cold, dark Monday winter morning to then go and do a job. And if it's a job you love or even if you're thinking, oh, you know, I don't really want to do it today, but if your reason why and your vision is really strong, then they're going to be the things that really help you to do that. So like I said, and for many of you, this isn't going to be a thing where it's like, okay, this is how you set up a business. It was just a thing, like in my experience in, it wasn't an on-off switch. It was just like, okay, we're getting, getting something that slowly resembles a business. And then it was the point of, okay, I was in hospital and uh, with my knee injury and it was like now this is a point of change now i want to decide what is it that i actually want in life what does that, what does my vision now look like is it a professional skier is it building a film company is it following this new goal that i've got in my life and for me it was very much that so i gave 110 percent into everything and i just just started to have something that resembled a business where i would do some sales i would i would try to approach people for video content. I would then start to build up clients and portfolios and things like that. But it was all very scrappy. Like it was it was nothing that really resembled a, a, a proper business. It was just very amateurish. And I look back and think, God, with, with a Gmail account, with a perspective studios at gmail.com account, why would anyone give me money? Like, doesn't that sound like a scam? Like there were so many pitfalls, so many things that I now look back and just think, wow, like, if it wasn't for pure determination to make that happen, it just, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised we got to that point at all. And I see people with businesses now in that situation that I come and mentor and, and I help support. And we look back and then, you know, in a very similar situation to me, and then we go back and try and create some structure. And I was working at the time out of my parents' living room. I hadn't moved out yet. Still trying to figure out if this was a viable option. And then I think... I think I knew things were going to happen for me when in the first year we did like 70 grand and it was like, okay, people clearly like what I do. People are coming back to have video content produced by me. So what now? What's the next step? And it was, do I spend this money? Do I, do I live? I mean, 70 grand is a good wage, right? Do I go and just live that life and, and stay a freelancer or do I try and scale this up to a multi-million pound company and that's what I wanted to do I wanted to scale a company that employed people that there was a community I wanted to be involved in something that was way bigger than, than just me I wanted to create a business where it didn't need me to be there it, it ran itself and I, I created I don't know some kind of legacy some some I don't know, legacy is definitely not like the right word. It's not, it's not a self-centered thing. It's just uh, being a part of something bigger than just yourself. I think if you haven't experienced it or you'll just find it very hard to, to relate to. Uh, and those of you who do have those visions or ambitions for the future, perhaps you do relate to this. I don't know, you know, let me know. Um, but that's what I wanted. I, I, I saw growing a company, employing lots of people and giving other people through employing them opportunities to have their dreams. You know, obviously you're paying them because they're an employee and then you can help them 
do the things that they want to do and, and those things really excited me and, and that's what the vision and the focus was set on so I decided that instead of spending the money and living a nice lifestyle I was going to sacrifice that short term put that into the business and reinvest every penny and that's when I moved out of of my parents house um, I bought this house with my wife um, we then started to employ people and then very quickly and we were able to scale the business and I'll kind of go into why we were able to scale it so much quicker from that point onwards as well and that's why within a couple of years I was able to go from my parents living room to having a house a studio getting married buying nice cars employing people still traveling the world and working on projects for major brands and helping smaller businesses as well helping smaller businesses through video content get off the ground and get going and every day just getting up from work and and just being so happy to go to work because it's the thing I really wanted the most and I've created this business for myself and that that was really important and it's nice to kind of take the time to look back on that as well and by all, by all means we're not where we want to be we still have bigger goals you know we've achieved a lot in a short space of time but we've still got a lot more to achieve and for me although you know I think everyone is impatient and everyone wants to achieve these things as quick as they can but for me it's not about doing it within a couple of years it's not about doing it as quick as possible it's about having a steady growth I mean this year with coronavirus we're like and picking this off the top of my head, but I think we're around about 35% up on our turnover than we were last year. You know, so we're able to still find opportunities and still grow, and we're still going to continue to grow to make sure we're hitting our targets and, and all of those things as well. And they're the things that on this channel I try to help businesses with and, and try and look at that planning and those structures. But one of the opportunities I found that really helped scale my business the most was getting people onto retainers. I call them regular content plans, they're my RCP systems. And they created such a solid foundation because when I moved into this freelance world, it was very uncertain. It was just a given that it was feast or famine. You were either getting paid or you weren't getting paid. And you might not be getting paid for a few months until your next job comes in. And that was just, everyone just seemed to accept that. And that just seemed crazy for me, you know, I, I'd been wanting to move out of home for a while and it was like, well, how can I move out of home if I don't know when I'm next getting paid or how can I grow this business that I've got in my head if I don't know who my next client is or where to get them from. So I started to move people onto these retainers, which were common in other industries, but they're really not common in the filmmaking industry because every project was so unique. And this was a barrier I kept throwing up for myself until I sat down one day and tried to work out a plan how to use retainers for creatives and freelancers so that it would work the same every time and we could get a regular income. And once I managed to figure that out, I think we signed like six clients within the first few months. And these were all people paying us regularly the same amount every single month. So then I knew that we could employ people because we had the money there coming in. We knew we could employ our second person. We knew that we could buy a studio. We knew we could do this because the more people we added to those retainers and how the business started to shift and change meant that we had a stable base and we always knew that we had the money to get through that period of time because of those things. And that's why they were so powerful. And now we created the stable structure for a business. We're able to look at new industries. We're able to pitch for work and move into these one-off projects again because we've got a ba stable baseline and that was certainly something for me that was like wow the response to that initially and finding that demand and that was just by listening to our customers just listening to what they wanted and I, it wasn't me sitting down here and picking a point and picking out something that was like okay this is a clear opportunity for our industry it was just like how can this work for everyone? How can this work for me? And how can this work for other people? And regular content's really important. And I spoke to a lot of clients and I asked them, you know, what kind of things are you interested in? What kind of packages are you interested in? What kind of price points are you interested in? And just did a bit of market research and then was able to put that together. Um, and that was a huge, uh, a huge thing for us to, to really get our business off the ground. So I think there's a real big shift in mindset when everyone is quite impatient 
And I think that's due to Amazon Prime. You know, you can get anything you want literally the next day. We often lose facts of the long-term goals and long-term achievements, and we're kind of not willing to sacrifice things short-term, or very few of us are willing to sacrifice things short-term, because to us that kind of feels like long-term. You know, for, for, to sacrifice you know, a £100,000 wage for a couple of years in order to have a, a, a business that's worth a few million pounds, let's say, some people would find that hard because a few years is going to feel like a very, very long time. It's not going to feel like a short-term thing. So I think it's really important to remember what your long-term goals are and your short-term goals and always keep that long-term goal in mind. And that's why your reason why, the reason why you get out of bed in the morning is so important because that's the long-term goal. That's what you're aiming your business towards. And it's very easy to think, well, yeah, short term, I can pull the money out of the business and I can buy any supercar I want right now. But that's not going to see me in a good position in five years time, you know, that's going to cripple the business, right? So short term, those things don't make sense. And, and I think if there's any advice I can give to a startup business owner, it is to quite simply just think about the long term, just think about what do you want to achieve and go out there and get it and make it happen because it's not going to happen by itself. The phone's not just going to ring with people wanting to buy your products at the end of it. You need to go out there and get it and despite everything that's happening, there is literally no time better than right now. There are so many opportunities but it relies on you being proactive and going out there and making your dreams actually become a reality. And I think that at every step of this journey as well, um, there's definitely been points where it felt like, I felt unsure with what to do and through various mentors, seminars, things like that, I've had support to kind of help guide me, not by them giving me the answer, but showing me techniques that I can ask myself these certain set of questions that will really help me understand the reasons why perhaps I'm wanting to do something or, or make that decision. But Everything has been, it hasn't been a gamble. Everything's been calculated and everything has been really, you know, it's made sense. It's made sense to spend the money. Like spending the money on employing people, spending the money on the studio was just a chance to find out what if, you know, what's next. Like it was worth, it felt like the right thing. And we are so used to Googling things to try and find out answers and getting answers from people that we actually don't listen to ourselves and listen to what our instincts are telling us. What does it feel like? Does it feel like something that you should be doing? If it does, then give it a go. You're not going to go wrong. Or if it feels like something that you shouldn't be doing, then don't do it. I think try and like, try and work on understanding yourself. Uh, all successful entrepreneurs, millionaires and billionaires are very self-aware and that's something that's really important because it's important to know what you do well and what you do badly and especially for expanding the business and, and they're things that I want to expand on over this channel as well and share those thoughts but I thought that this was a, just a really good starting point to give you guys an idea about my journey as a startup business and how I've managed to grow it in a relatively short period of time to where we are today and, and how even at the, at the point in time we're still pushing this is not this is not our end goal, right? You know, it, this is us in the middle of this. This is us still growing and people who, you know, join this channel will also have seen a development over the last six months of doing these things and how things are shifted in our business and how things are changing. And um, yeah, I think personally, by coaching people, by mentoring people, by creating the Perspective Academy, um, all these things, which if you want to find out more information, I'll, I'll link in the description below. But these things have really filled me with a sense of purpose and a sense of fulfillment and actually to the point where my personal goals are shifting and actually shifting towards how can I help these people more? How can I help people start businesses? Because what I've come to understand is that although I found it relatively easy, I mean it's been hard work but I, I've I found the processes, I've, under, I've understood business is probably the easiest way. Whereas I, under, I appreciate that not everyone does understand those things. So I can provide value where um, it can benefit people and to see people have successes out of that has, has really given me a sense of 
passion and fulfillment for a new area, a new opportunity with that side of business. I'm now sitting here with three different businesses and each one has their own unique structures and systems, but they all kind of follow the same solid business advice. So speaking from experience, all of these things are, are really, really important. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different to what I would normally do. It's a little bit more personal and I would love you to hit the subscribe button, let, leave a comment and let me know what you thought of it. What kind of content would you like to see more of? What kind of business do you have as well? You know, I'd be interested to know. I, is this a community of all filmmakers and videographers at the moment and photographers, or are there other people who have different businesses and are using this to you know, try and gain knowledge? Um, because that's how I learn. I learned from learning from social media marketing, from uh, property investors, things that worked well within different people's businesses and what I could apply to my own business as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've certainly found it insightful. I hope you've managed to take away a small amount of information as well that should hopefully benefit your startup company or your business and your structure at the moment in time. And uh, I really wish you all the best for the future. Peace.